What do you get when you cross an elephant, a squid, and a weevil? Well, if the first thing that came to your mind was Subnautica's sea tread leviathan, then I'd love to have your sense of imagination. And you would also be right. These little guys clock in at 20 meters tall and 20 meters long. So while they're roughly four times bigger than an elephant, the sea treader is actually Subnautica's smallest leviathan class creature. The sea treader's body is dark blue and decorated with bright bioluminescent orange patterns. And with its three legs, the sea treader is Subnautica's only leviathan to use walking as its primary mode of transportation, and wanders 45-46B's oceans looking for enough plants to eat to put a small restaurant out of business. The creature's three legs are double jointed to help it move through the water, and if you take a close look at its front leg, you will notice that this also doubles as its head. Imagine having your face on your knee. This front leg or beak is also jointed like its back legs to help the creature move around, with the sea treader using it to siphon plant material from the seafloor. To help the sea treader locate food, the creature has two pairs of eyes, one large set and one smaller set, and these are what are known as compound eyes, which are the eyes you will most commonly know from insects. These types of eyes have the advantage of giving an animal a large field of view and the ability to identify fast moving objects more quickly, although the downside of compound eyes is that you can't focus or see images as clearly as you would with a normal eye. This means the sea treader has a greater field of view around itself to warn it of any potential dangers. This combined with its tough shell known as a carapace should mean the sea treader is able to escape from most threats relatively unharmed, leaving the creature only at risk from the planet's larger predators. The sea treader also has two large feelers that look similar to a squid's tentacles to help it find its way around. These start on the underside of its body and extend upwards on either side of its head. These feelers actually run the entire length of the sea treader's body and end with two spiked protrusions at the creature's rear. These antenna can identify a range of scents and chemicals to help them locate new areas to graze, avoid large predators, and sense if others of their kind are nearby. With these eyes and feelers, the sea treader is well equipped for a migratory lifestyle, which is good because due to its size and hearty appetite, the creature would likely strip a single biome bear of any plants incredibly quickly. This is what has likely caused the sea treader to have evolved its active lifestyle of grazing and moving between biomes, never lingering too long in one place. As a herbivore, sea treaders move and live in herds, moving along the aptly named sea treader path which borders the Grand and Sparse Reefs, the Dunes and the Blood Kelp Trench, with a second smaller path located within the Grand Reef. Sea treaders walk slowly around these paths, constantly emitting loud, echoing calls, which could be used to communicate with other members of its herd. Sea treaders can be found in three different sizes, small, medium and large, which shows the creature each stage of its life cycle. While moving, they protect their juveniles by placing them in the middle of the herd with the adults positioned on the outside to act as a barrier and a form of protection. We do not currently know how sea treaders reproduce, as their eggs cannot be found within the game even with the use of console commands, so it's possible they could give birth to live young. As sea treaders move, they stir up the ground beneath them, resulting in a chance for up to three shale outcrops to appear with each step they take. These then slowly sink back into the ground over time. This can be a good opportunity for you to get a hold of some resources, but be careful, as while sea treaders are passive, they also suffer from road rage, so if you do get in their way, they will attack you by pecking or swinging their beaks at you, which deal 40 damage. And don't think you can stun them using a stasis rifle to grab some quick resources either, as the sea treader is completely immune to its effects. If you want a safer route to getting resources, you could always stay behind the sea treader, as every now and then the creature will stop and go to the toilet, and this can be picked up and used to power your bioreactors. Luckily, this waste is quite easy to spot as it glows, which I'm sure is completely safe and definitely not radioactive. Wait, what is that thing? Maybe this stuff is radioactive after all. A group of warpers must have picked up on the scent and now they're here to purge us. Quick, you'll need to watch this video next, otherwise we might never get back to the surface. And special thanks to my patron, Asmodeus for making this video possible.